Hello, everybody. Welcome to the June 20th edition of the SIG Network meeting. Um, as always, this meeting is governed by the Kubernetes Code of Conduct, which boils down to roughly be nice to one another. So please be nice to one another. Um, also, if you want to ask questions or interject, it's very helpful if you use the Zoom raise hand feature as that allows us to better organize those questions and interjections. Uh, we have an open agenda. Um, so now or anytime during the meeting, you feel free to add things to the bottom of the agenda. Right now, all we have on the agenda is triage, so it might be a short meeting. Um, but yeah, feel free to add something. And uh, with that, I think we will just kind of get right into it. So I'll start sharing my screen. Assume you're seeing the uh, the doc here. Yeah. All right. First things first. Let's go over issues that do not have anybody assigned to them. Starting with Netpal block self pod traffic using an SVC and not direct call. So I took a quick look at this one um, just before the meeting started. Um, it's a fun case where they're calling this their own service, expecting it to get redirected back to themselves. Um, and network policy is saying, oh, no, you won't, um, because they didn't actually put a policy in there. Um, the question is, what would that policy even look like? Would it be their source IP, or would it be pod selector? In that hairpin case, I think we will often see it get natted back to the node's IP address. So would the policy describe the node IP? I would say Roger that. that a pod selector should work, but the, the network implementation may need to do strange things to make it work. But, but from the user's point of view, you should not be required to know that. Well, and the second question is, should they be expected? I think they want to not write a self policy. I think the answer is no, you have to write a self policy because you left your namespace. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the, the the other argument is that the implementation should just make it work without them having to write a policy. Um, I'm not sure if I believe that is true or not though. I'm not sure if it should or so if it if you connect directly to your pod ID, it yep. will work regardless of whether you have a network policy or not, right? Yes. Well, actually I think that depends entirely on the network policy implementation. Okay, it's true. And silly it won't. <laughs> right. Can can we at least say that if it would work with the direct pod to pod connection, then it should also just work with the pod to service to pod connection without you needing to make a policy? I think that's probably fair and it's probably true, but I don't have a test bed I can run that on today. What happens if you have two pods with the same selectors and network policy and pod A is talking to the service that fronts them and gets sent to pod B, would that be allowed? In, in that case, unambiguously, you need you, know, you need to not be blocking it with network policy, because that is definitely going to go from one pod namespace into another pod namespace, and that will definitely and, pass through network policy. And in fact, this is one of the motivating use cases for network policy is to prevent like an east-west attack. If if say a internet-facing proxy gets compromised, you can't use that one proxy to compromise other proxy. But if if both pods are from the same similar deployment, for example, and they hit yep. the service, they're going to round robin. So 50% of the traffic should come to itself. 50% should go to its neighbor, the, the other part of the deployment. Right. So I think by principle, you should have a policy. So if you want to assign this to me, I, I can. I was, I was already starting a response on it, Nana. I'll, I'll finish my response and then you can okay. echo if you want to. Okay, sounds good. Contract tables having stale entries for UDP connections. Let's see if anybody's touched it yet. Uh, I was taking a peek. There, because 
I mean, if you go to the reproducer, is uh, I'm doing a lot of things um, at the same time, and suddenly this happened, and I don't have clear. I mean, we had a lot of contact issues, and cast, uh, users reported them, but it's a long time since we we have another of this problem. I oh, know, assign to me, I, I will follow up with, with them, but at this point it's debugging. Okay, thank you. It, there is also a known bug, which, which we have an issue for somewhere, that if an IP tables update fails, then cube proxy can lose track of the fact that it needed to do contract. Oh, that's the one from right. <coughs> I remember looking at some of that um, contract code and thinking there are some corner cases here that are not well covered. And I started thinking about what that unit test would look like and, and then realized it can't at all be a unit test. It has to be an enormous, weird system test. And then I gave up on it. You don't happen to, maybe we can find that one real quick. Or I, yeah, Antonio, we'll leave that as a, sure. It was this T T N Q N. The, if, I only know the people for the hand, hand so. Dan's for got the, it. You add it there. I remember this discussion, so that may be. Thank you, Dan. Andrew, if you don't mind, uh, there's a question in chat you might be able to answer. Yeah, I was I was just working on that. Got it. Cool, thank you. Okay, uh, so basically, this is just probably the problem, right? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I, I didn't. Really, uh, just occurred to me that it could be co co contracts need to produce it. Otherwise, we we. For every contract issue, we have an E2E. Uh, I mean, it, and this thing takes a lot of time to do that. Okay. Well, thank you for grabbing that, Antonio. Next one that has no assignee, John Howard. Pod IP temporarily removed from status uh, when the, pod transitions. This, this is assigned. Uh, this is interesting. And uh, this is from the node and the assigned to Mimowo. He's working on that. Assigned I don't know why. Mimowo. Yeah, it's the name of the GitHub. And... I see him, yeah. Yeah, he's working on that. Okay. So th there was some refactor on the no on the pod life cycle. And when it's been deleted, there is some period that <laughs> loses the IP. And then it recovers it back. But this is a node, a node problem, not a network problem. Sig node, is sig node assigned on this? Okie doke. <clears throat> Signode is now labeled, and then I assigned uh, Mihal, and we'll um, we can he can follow up with us if he needs any help. Cool. I think we just have the one last one that was unassigned. Named ports in NIT container sidecars do not work with network policies. A lot of network policy stuff today. Um, <clears throat> let's see if anybody's taking a peek. There is some conversation going on. Antonio's taking a peek. Yeah, this this is related to other things. It seems that the other user was complaining that the thing happens with port forward. The the code simply doesn't wasn't checking for the name of port. So most probably the implementation of the network policies in this thing is not yeah. taking into consideration the name of port. 
because of the way we ended up extending init containers into a separate parallel list, my guess is that there are lots of components which would look at a pod, look at the list of containers for a named port, don't also look at init containers because why would they? Because init containers are short lived and run before the real containers, except now they don't. Oh, okay. It's init, not name it pod. I was confused. Right. It's the. It, it, I think the problem is because you can have a long-lived init container, a sidecar now, if you have a named port in a sidecar, should port forward work? Should network policy work? My guess is probably yes, but m not surprised that it wouldn't. Well, one thing here now that we're in this is the order matters, right? So what, what I suggested in the other port forward thing is is the is is the the pod the containers normal containers take preference over the init container right because the init is not supposed to be. I mean, so uh, there's two there's two questions here. When a pod is in the init container phase, like it's suppose suppose it takes five five minutes to make it through all of the init containers. Um, during that five minutes should network policy and port forward and other things work? That's the first question. The second question is, if you have a sidecar in a container, which runs forever, and it exposes a port, should that work? And I feel like uh, it probably should. But the question you is, see here what they're have... doing in Calico, right, Tim? <clears throat> okay. No, I didn't see this. Can you go to the uh, our old to friend Casey's hanging out in here? Am I not? Am I not sharing my screen? Yeah, you no, are. Sorry, you I, I just hadn't okay. seen the issue before. To the diff. But the question is, name oh, port, name containers can be duplicate the name, right? Uh, the, the name of the port, name ports. It yes, I think there's a bug in the validation that allows the named port to be duplicated. So then, the, the, my question is: I think that the normal containers take precedence over the init containers, just because it's the way that it was oh, before. Yeah, yes, if there's a conflict in the names, I think the regular container should win. Yes. Regular or whatever. When when this was added, this init container thing. Side Relatively. Yeah, yeah like the last right? couple of releases. Okay. 29 or 28. And is GA already? No, I think it's beta. But it seems like we, need, we, we, we probably need some new uh, EDU tests for existing. Yeah. For the, that's, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Like maybe there's a way we can catch this for everybody. So th this suite of issues was on my list of things to look at when we got into the implementation window, which we are now in. Um, I'm not sure what the real fix is because we can't sort of backwards fix validation. So the best we can do is issue warnings about conflicts and then establish what the rule for who wins. So, so anybody can open the an issue detail in the test that they want to see because those, those used to be picked by people that want to contribute. And wait. That would be if, you, if you are very detailed on the test, a new contributor can take it. If it's ambiguous or vague, it's, it's, it's painful for review. Anything else I should add to the little summary here? And does anybody want to try to kind of carry this forward a little bit and keep shepherding it forward? I, I will be looking at it, so I guess you can assign it to me. Um, it's in start in my mailbox of, of interesting and tricky things. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, anything else to add to that summary? That's reasonable. Just we need to actually decide on what we're doing and then probably make some tests that follow that decision. Yeah. All right. And then obviously we should probably keep in touch with George because they're making moves trying to actually do something about it. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. That is it for the issues I opened that have nobody assigned or nobody assigned to them. Do you want to run through um, issues that are, you know, like 
assigned but haven't been touched in a while see if there's any that we that's, can that's what i was do. yeah that's what i was thinking next i'm on that list right now so Excellent. let's take a look at should we go by how ancient they are <laughs> um i mean the the re triage bot will move things that have been assigned and triaged and then not touched in a while so if we start oldest first you're going to see some interesting history yeah I think <clears> maybe <throat> we'll grab stuff that is not uh not labeled uh rotten or let's just look for stuff that's labeled needs triage that's probably a good thing to do first it needs oh they all are needs triage and is on us let's go back a little bit further though stuff that's not this is not uh, considered rotten right now. Is it frozen? No. This one we said priority backlog, so I think this I'm, one might be one of those. I'm working on this one. OK. If PR created soon. So I think what, with this one, I will. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just removing the uh, needs triage label, it's, we don't really need to triage that one anymore. It would seem we're mo moving forward on it. I see. Is that just slash accept? Uh, yeah, that'll do it, I think. And okay. then, thank you. And then pod status, pod IP, assigned to Ted you. I don't recognize that username. That one says sig help wanted, but <coughs> triage. So that might be another situation where we just need to accept it. But somebody looks like they might be wanting to work on it. But that might have been a while ago. I'll bookmark this one and kind of catch up on that one. That one might need some some bumps. Is is this really SIG network or is it more SIG node? It's definitely it looks like it's more SIG node. I'll take a yeah. look at it and just kind of so we don't have to spend time here on it. Um T speed. This one's need triage but important long term. This so is, that one might be another one we just want to accept. This is subordinate to the uh fixed probes cap. Roger that. Yeah, this has uh, Swiss and and oh, Swiss. Sure, yeah. Sure. And then has, uh, wait. For anybody okay. who hasn't read that uh, that cap, it's actually a great cap. Yeah, it's awesome. So what was that? Cap? Actually, sorry, actually, Adrian. Not, I what was the cap? Uh, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it's the. Um, Dan just scrolled past it. Uh, the... The I'll get it. Four, five, five, Revitalized nine. probes. Four, five, five, one, you said? Oh, yeah, right. I've read that one. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Redesigning probes. It's tricky, okay. but it's a fun one. Roger that. It sort of hits the, the worst of our, it hits the worst of our version skew problems. Uh, also, the, the container the people want to do sub second probe. That's oh my god! Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I saw that. So oh, we need to rush <laughs> because once they add that, the the problem is like either like because version skew because a cubelet could be like n minus four now, right? Like you have to add this feature, leave it in alpha until the oldest possible cubelet understands this feature, and then you can turn it and on by default. I guess you can go beta off if you want. It's Antonio's trick. But it's still going to be several releases of, of waiting. And it's even worse. There is this exec prop that was that Andrew I can find this back. That the exec prop, if it fails or if it's timeout or something like that, doesn't fail or something like that. And they have a feature gate there just to roll out the, the bag. Yeah. And because this impact all the props, they know people is still not able to, to remove. Yeah, probes are um, a, a mess. Yeah. And subsecond Sorry, probes was... is terrifying because we're going to end up with Kubelet doing 100 QPS of probes just to pods, just to see if they're still alive. <laughs> I mean, already, if you run 200 pods on a machine and you set your liveness probe at uh you know five seconds you're running 20 plus qps of just http probing and people wonder why kubelet consumes you know double digit percents of the cpu so 
So I did just kind of gloss over this one, but this one just is old and looks like it needs a bump. So I bookmarked that for myself. And I'll that which, one which is not one inconsistent reset of changes to Kubernetes endpoints. But uh, is there a bug there? As far as I can tell, Cal, Cal, uh, Cal at some point was like, we need more information. I'll take a look. And then somebody else was like, I want to help with this. And then Tim, you said in 2021 that, yep, I, I saw it happen. Um, so I think there is a bug here. Somebody was interested in helping with this and then assigned uh, themselves. And then it just kind of fell off the map for a while. So I'll take a look uh, and uh, dig uh, in a little bit. Maybe talk to Cal real quick. So pin me again, because this, this code was changed. I, I I am there, but I shouldn't be. And then Kube proxy log warning and or an event if node port overlaps with on node ephemeral range. I think that Dan fixed this. Oh, did you fix this? A development like oh, that. Oh, oh Dan or somebody fixed this. Did we? I don't remember fixing that. It looks like it was closed. Is that what the little red arrows mean? I think somebody submitted a PR and, and it got reviewed and then they never updated it. Oh, oh no. What, the one that was saying is the one that we have the listener. And the listener was uh, spamming something. So we have the listener, right, in the with the node port. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that was something different. I think okay. th this this issue is simply like, let's just log it somewhere or throw an event or do something if you've given me a node port and it happens to overlap with what the kernel thinks is the ephemeral range because there's a potential for conflict there i can probably take this one and do it it, it really like shouldn't be very scary. difficult it's it's just a matter of setting up the the testing port yeah. right? I mean, it's going to be 10 percent work and 90 percent test next couple of weekends here i got some extra time if i can't grab it during the week maybe i can do it over coffee on a Sunday morning or something. I'll take this it, one and kind of. It's perpetually on my list of like, this shouldn't take long, but it'll probably take longer than I really want to give it today. And every time I look at it, I think, uh, I'll come back to this one. Yeah, I'll take it'll a look. Be... I mean, we're in a scenario. I'm like, actually, I don't, I can't. <laughs> but it'll it'll be cathartic. It'll either be cathartic to fix, or you'll look at it and you're like, no, this is complicated because some other reason. And then we'll just decide not to do it. Roger that. Take a peek at that one. I love the, the uh, that, feeling of closing old issues. Yes, it is a good feeling. All right, back to the main page here. So we do have a lot. We are at 30 minutes. Um, I We don't have any, I, I checked. Nobody added anything to the agenda. I don't, I don't know if everybody on this call is like playing. I don't have any agenda. Right now, but. <laughs> um, we, we did pretty well on getting most of our caps checked in. Antonio had an exception, but we got that through. Um, and found actually, I think, a pretty decent solution to the one little corner case. Um, so the next three weeks, that's what we've got for development, three weeks. Um, so folks who are pushing on PRs related to KEPs, please um, be loud and make sure that they don't get lost in the noise. So it feels like a very short dev window. So nobody gets sick and... Uh, Get those PRs flowing. Yeah. And then another reminder, I think I'm 99% positive. I've got the email for the Contributor Summit in my inbox mm -hmm. right now. So start start thinking about what you're going to do for the Salt Lake City Contributor Summit, if you can come. Um, we'd love to have you there. It's a lot of fun. It's my favorite part of KubeCon. If you've never been to one before, you just need to be a Kubernetes org member or Kubernetes SIGs org member. Um, so yeah, we'd love to have people bring stuff in there. Uh, Pretty much, if you haven't been there before, I think a lot of people on this call have, but if you haven't, like Adrian, for instance, I don't know if I've seen you at them before. Um, Adrian was in Paris, right? Just, no? Yeah, were you were in Paris? Paris. No, I was, I was in Paris, Paris, but not a contributor. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, if you get a chance, it's just us that work on Kubernetes. Like, we get together, we have lunch, we talk about things that are specific. It's a lot of fun. It's my favorite part of going to KubeCon. I, I really enjoy it. So we'd love to see you there. Uh, for Salt Lake, if you can make it. And if not, maybe London. Um, cool. So yeah, uh, 
Does anybody feel I'm I'm I have a couple in here that I know I need to are are waiting on updates from other people. So I don't are there any other ones in here anybody wants to raise like they feel blocked on? Rob, I noticed you're no offense, I'm not trying to pick on you, but I noticed you're assigned to quite a few of them. Do you need help? Do you need somebody to take over a couple, like triaging and shepherding some of those forward? That's cool. Like uh not just Rob, but like anybody feeling stuck. Yeah, I mean, I, I will never complain if anyone wants to take one off. I will not be offended if anyone wants to take one of mine. I'll be quite happy with that, but I will and, try and take and, a look at these. As a reminder, I say this all the time, but just for people who haven't heard it before, taking a bug for triage does not mean you have to go fix the bug. It means please verify that this bug is real or has enough information to reproduce or something, and then we can figure out what the actual priority and importance of it is. Roger that. It's not a huge ask, I hope, for, for people. There are folks here who are relatively new contributors. Grab one, see if you can reproduce it, or if the bug even makes sense to you. If it doesn't, ask questions until it does. Yeah. And to add on that, this is all volunteer work. If you take it and then you decide, I can't keep going, no shame. Unassign yourself. It's not a big deal. Um, we're happy to have you spend a minute on it if you can. If you can't, no problem. Don't worry about it. Don't feel like, oh, God, no, I don't want to. It's fine. So, I mean, just look, cool. we assign them uh, all to Robin. They don't get done anyway. So, <laughs> what's the code of conduct again? I meant me. I meant me. <laughs> Worst case is they get assigned to me and they don't get done. <laughs> oh, ouch. That was great. All right. So, we love you, Rob. Um, so, yeah, if you are, and also if you, if you do feel like you're, you, you're even getting stuck in shepherding, you can always reach out for help. Like if you're like, I'm kind of trying to drag this forward, but I feel kind of like I can't, I don't even know what to do next. That's cool. That yeah. happens all the time. Just let us know. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if there's any more we really need to go over. We kind of did 30 minutes of triage. Um, maybe we can just end early today. Anybody have any objections? Anything they want to talk about and specifically any more call outs? I'm good with that. Cool. Give it a couple more seconds in case anybody want, is like typing and wants to bring something up. Going once, going twice. Sold. All right. Everybody enjoy your half hour back. Have a great day. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Happy hacking. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.